Hello and welcome to this edition of Copy and Correct Grammar. I haven't done one of these in a long time. And I have a specific purpose for doing this one. But if you have any grammar questions, feel free to pop them in the uh, comments field. If someone that's watching this and right now, could you please tell me whether or not you can hear me? Meta Yarb to Yarby. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. Meta Yarb to Yarby. Awesome. Hello, Kane. Okay. So the purpose of this Coffee and Correct Grammar is that I got some um, emails from an individual, a student of mine who was asking about the term lodial and they were having some difficulty parsing it and i'm sure this individual didn't, didn't mean any harm or anything like that by asking me for closure via email but this is something that it's very time consuming to type out these types of things in emails or text messages or comments fields or whatever that's why i prefer to do video consultations or workshops the workshops basically for the rule one rule equal performance meaning i'm investing my now space in helping you therefore you would invest something to me whatever that may be whatever value that may be whatever we agree to so that there's a geometric level playing field and it's not unbalanced. You see? So therefore, I create this video as a gift to you that I put out into the world to help many people, hopefully, instead of just that one individual who emailed me. Instead of investing the now space of typing out a long email with the closure for one person, now I'm giving it to everyone. So for me, that balances out the rule one, rule equal. Not necessary on the other individual's part. So we're going to talk about lodial today. This individual had trouble parsing lodial. Can't find the word. Sometimes, as, you, as I detail in my parse playlist, when I give with great speci specific... <laughs> specificity when i give with great specificity how to do this you go back to the earliest nativity root mean of each particle of the word and sometimes that requires using techniques not easily recognized by the fiction i don't know how else to put it the fiction kind of directs you in in certain down certain pathways with the parse. And as anyone who's ever studied English, which I studied English in college, I was an English major for a little bit, it's very confusing right off the bat. There's contradictions and dichotomies across the board. You just kind of have to use logic and common sense and how to do this stuff. For example, I'll just give you one small example, and there are thousands of them. Take a word like deal, D-E-A-L. How many syllables are in that word? How about the word seal, S-E-A-L? How many syllables are in that word? How about heal, H-E-A-L? How many syllables in that word? All those words I just mentioned, it's the same answer. How many syllables? One, the fiction tells us. One syllable in those words. What did I do with those words? I just changed the first letter of the word. Seal, heal. Now, put an R in front of that. R-E-A-L. Now, how many syllables are there? Two. 
You see, the only difference between teal, T-E-A-L, and real, R-E-A-L, are the consonants that begin the word, but yet real is two syllables and teal is one. Why is that? Well, for me, when I look it up and parse it, R-E means no, A-L means contract, no contract. So real is no contract, literally. But then if you look up seal, S-E-A-L, that's positive performance because it's one syllable, one particle. There's just little things like that. So with that in mind, I'm going to go into parsing the word lodial. And I'm just going to do it through my phone as I'm speaking with you. Because as a teacher, I've learned that over the years, it's best to just kind of give, if an individual is serious about learning, they'll take direction and they'll follow down the trails that are presented to them, but it's best not to lead them by the hand or else they really won't learn anything. They'll just be dependent upon the leader. And I'm not a leader, I'm just a guide. Yeah, you can go that way if you want to, or you can go that way if you want to, it's your choice. I'm not going to direct you to do anything. It's up to you to do the work. I've already done the work. I'm not going to do the work for you, if that makes sense. <laughs> Otherwise, it's, it creates a dependency. And there are enough venues out there, enough individuals out there who are more than happy to create a dependency and have you follow behind them and chase them around. I'm not one of them. So here we go. Where do we find the word allodial? Because that's where the term lodial comes from. From my knowledge, Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller just took the term lodial from the word allodial. A-L-L-O-D-I-A-L. -L -L. And he just took off the A-L prefix and just used the term lodial. That's pretty much what he did, from my knowledge. And looking it up and doing my own research, I find this to be the case. So where do we find it? We find it in real estate. I just Googled it. Google is a wonderful tool. Tell you a lot of things. I just put in allodial in the search bar. And then the first thing that came up was allodial title. Allodial title constitutes ownership of real property. Not imaginary property, real property. Remember, we just parsed real. Land, buildings, and fixtures that is independent of any superior landlord. Allodial title is related to the concept of land held in allodium or land ownership by occupancy and defense of the land. Now, occupancy, outside of the fact when we uh, parse it, it's no contract. Occupancy is a military term. Most places that I know of, when they get a, like a, a water and sewer bill, it doesn't have a name on the address that it's addressed to. It says occupant. <laughs> so many different ways we can go with this, but I'm going to stick to the, the subject matter. Because that's what we do. So there, there's a key term there. Allodium. That's something to look up. If you can't find allodial in an etymology dictionary, now they've given you another term, allodium. We can look that up. So let's look that up. Allodium. Allodium. Land freely held without obligation of service to any overlord. Allodial land tenure was of particular significance in Western Europe during the Middle Ages, where most land was held, held by feudal tenure. Now, they kind of make you think that this is stuff that happened back then and no longer happens. It's not the case, if you do your research. It's not the case. Same shit then, same shit now. Okay, so 
Britannia.com, Elodium, land tenure. Elodium, land freely held. Okay, yeah, we just read that. End of the 9th century, 12th and 13th centuries. Peasant holdings. In England, no land is referred to as allodial, but an estate in fee simple corresponds in practice to absolute ownership. So they just revenued the name. Simple. Okay, so now we have something to work with. Let's look up Elodium. Uh, I don't know if that's showing up backwards on the screen or not. But uh, you should be able to tell that I have the term Elodium in the search bar. But it doesn't come up in etymology online. So let's look up. Elodio. Same thing. Doesn't come up. So, what are we to do now? Look at the particles of the word. To me, as David did, I would take away the AL, the no contract prefix. So now what do we have? Lodial. So what do we see in the term lodial? Well, I see Lodi, Dia, Al. But for the most part, when we go by syllables, Lodial. That sounds like three syllables to me the uh, the syllable website I'm literally doing this the way that I do it and the way that I outline in my parse videos which are available to the public you can learn this yourself if you choose to study this YouTube channel Three syllables, as I said. So the first particle of the word looks like load to me, L-O-D. So let's look that up. It brings us to L-O-D-E. Middle English spelling of load, L-O-A-D, a burden. It keeps most of the word's original meaning, a way, a course, something to be followed. 16th century. Okay, that's pretty recent. We're looking for something a little bit earlier. Lodestone, lodestar, livelihood. Middle English, 1300s, low leader, guide, pilot, steersman. So the next step would be to click on load. OAD, since that is the first reference that they give, the first connection. Now we're back to the 1200s. Circa 1200, load, laid. That which is laid upon a person or beast, a burden. A sense extension from Old English, lad, a way, course, carrying, a street, water course, maintenance, support. From Proto-Germanic, Latho, way, road, course, to go forth, see, lead. Okay, uh, everything else is pretty much after 12th century. So once we hit the earliest route, we go down that path now. To see if we can find something earlier. So now the next we've gone from load, L-O-D, 
to load, L-O-D-E, to load, L-O-A-D, and now we're going to lead, L-E-A-D, to guide. Old English laden, L-A-E-D-A-N, and the A-E, by the way, is a digraph. Because they can be connected together. Cause to go with oneself, march at the head of, go before as a guide, accompany and show the way. Carry on, spout forth, bring forth. Circa 1200, meaning to be in first place. Act the part of leader. Wait. So now we have we're coming in Miller uses the word meaning place has weight march at the head of go before as a guide so in correct sentence structure the lodial he normally would say that it functions as a locator it's telling the fact where what fact it is we're locating the fact or as another individual is quoted as saying, first in line, first in time, that type of thing. So what I've just done here is I've gone back into fiction and I've certified what lodial means by going through the particles of the word. And I did that just by using the first three letters, L-O-D, which led me down this pathway to this closure from the 12th century. The rest of the word, IAL means contract. Lodial is a contract with an original nativity place. To be in first place, to guide, it's a guide. So you have your positional, which tells you what's going on in that section of the sentence, whether it's your cause, your concern, your possessive or your authority. And then you have your lodial, which now says, directs what fact it is. His fact, her fact, my fact, the fact, this fact, each fact. That's the lodial. It gives the location of the fact. It's kind of like the positional is if you're building a, a structure, a foundation, a wall, the positional is you're looking for where you're going to place the brick. That's the position, the function of the positional. And then you set the brick down where you're going to put it. And then you take your mortar and put it around the brick and set it into place. The mortar serves the function as the lodial. And then you step back and there it is in place. That's your fact. Now it's a fact. It's been positioned, lodial, set, fact, boom. That's the way it works. So I hope the individual that sent me that email is watching this. I've just outlined how to get closure on lodial through the fiction. And it would be up to you, the author, if you want to use position lodials and facts in your contracts and correct sentence structure, you would have to give your own finite mean your own quantum grammar, finite mean for the word lodial. As I say in the description, this is about grammar. You're more than welcome to ask whatever you want to ask. But if it doesn't specifically have to do with the grammar, I might not answer it. But then again, I might. Psychology explain, please. Colon James hyphen Allen, colon Cooper. Well, since this is a grammar video, 
I'll just point out that in your correct name there, James Allen Cooper, you would necessarily need a space between the colon and the Cooper. Because as it stands, colon James hyphen Allen colon Cooper, there's no spaces in between the names, so we don't know what it's saying. If you put a space in between the colon and the Cooper, then it would read for the James hyphen Allen of the Cooper, period. And that would be the correct way to write it because you have your cause and your concern. And it's not a complete sentence. It's a, it's, a, it's a name. So the verb is not necessary in that case because it is a name. But the space would be between the colon and the C in Cooper for the correctness. So now, psychology, explain, please. I'm going to have to guess that you mean... Explain the psychology of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. It starts with being programmed in the fiction through the school system to think a certain way, to accept authoritative constructs, authoritarianism, being told what to do all the time. Am I allowed to do this? Am I allowed to do that? In correct sentence structure, you are the authority. No one can tell you what to do. You authorize what you do. If you have closure on what it is you're doing, of course you have to learn these things. But ultimately, one can only navigate to the best of their knowledge base. Volition is key. It's the most important thing. And as long as those principles are adhered to, honor grace that balance of honor and grace it cannot be unbalanced it must be balanced honor grace peace neutrality rule one rule equal judge mechanics judge mechanics get the whole story the fiction has also taught us to assume everything to assume someone has authority over us to assume that there's some higher power over us, always watching us at all times, like freaking Santa Claus or something. <laughs> These are things that have been drilled into us. In addition to the negative condition of state that we're brought up with that you will hear if you watch those early Colin David Eiffelwin Colin Miller videos where we scold our children, don't do that. You can't do that. Always talking about what they're doing wrong rather than what they're doing right. All the way back to religion, the programming there of the Ten Commandments, where the majority of them are in a negative condition of state. Thou shalt not. The psychology and correct sentence structure is positive performance. Although we do convey when there's a void of something, we're not proving negatives. I started listening to that podcast you suggested with the special guest. Imaginary hyphen unit. Apologies. I talked to a lot of people, suggest a lot of things. I have no idea what you're talking about. Unfortunately, maybe you could refresh my memory membrane. How far can you go with the syntax key? And I'm not sure what you mean by that either. Where are we going? What's the goal? What's the, what's the destination? <laughs> what's the best approach for further fundamentals? Uh, this YouTube channel. Feel free to study this YouTube channel. Any grammar question you have, specific grammar question, can be answered on this YouTube channel. And if it can't, and if it's brought to my attention, I will create something to give a venue for closure, which I just did today on the word lodial. I added a little bit more to it, and I'm going to publish it later. This, Those parts of this video on the YouTube channel in the Parse playlist so that people have that at their disposal. The questions you're asking don't really have to do with the grammar 
It have to it has to do with theoretical devil's advocate scenarios, presumptions and assumptions. It's like people ask me, "Well, what can I use this for? Or what good will this do me in real life? How far can we take this?" I don't know. You it's up to you. How far do you want to take it? And where are you going? If you're looking at getting far, where are you going? Like what's your what's your end point? What are you looking for? What, what are you looking to do? You got to set these things up in a practical manner. And again, this brings it back to the psychology. This is a psychology. The fiction trains us to put these scenarios in place and really invest value in them when really they're just immaterial. They're like non-tangible, like possibilities. It's great to talk about possibilities, but you must have solid practical goals in mind if you're doing these sorts of things. Like what I did when I started this, I had goals that I wanted to do, that I wanted to achieve. Number 1, I wanted to learn it. Number 2, I wanted to teach it. Number 3, I wanted to write contract with it. And number 4, of course, of course I wanted to be able to stop any type of bureaucratic trespass that was harming me or or someone else close to me. And I've actually done all four of those things 100% up to this point. I've been successful with it 100%. It's just getting out of that imaginary fairy tale fiction BS. Things that one cannot certify. It's great to dream, it's great to wish. One must also have concrete solid goals in place to balance those dreams and aspirations out. The one with the replacement guest host. I still have no idea what you're talking about. Was I involved in this podcast? Maybe you could send a link or a title or something concrete so I know exactly what it is you're talking about before I comment on it. Your channel is really comprehensive but it can be a bit intimidating. Intimidating. That's interesting. Intimidating how? Like I'm thinking of intimidating in the fiction sense of people are afraid of it. <laughs> like people would be afraid of of I don't know. Intimidating just means to be afraid, right? Let's parse that. in intimidate <laughs> well when you parse the word intimidate of course i n means no it's a particle of negation and then we have timid which means frightened shy fearful cowardly so intimidate means no it means to not be frightened to not be shy contract it's a contract with not being frightened or shy so that's a good thing then if you're here you're not frightened or shy of course I wouldn't want anyone to be frightened or shy. I know that when I first started learning this, I had a fear of looking stupid in front of people. I never wanted to speak up in a public setting or a comments field and ask questions for fear of people ridiculing me, which does happen. Not here, but in other venues. But then I got over that real quick because that's part of the psychology again being humble having humility 
whether you have it or you don't, if you start practicing it, you will gain it. I love to use the, the martial arts analogies like in, in boxing, you have to get in there and you have to spar with people. You have to take hits. You don't know how you're going to react until you're actually punched in the face. It changes everything. You might get knocked down. I've had my nose broke several times <laughs> and almost been knocked out. Had my bell rung, so to speak. It happens to everybody. I got over that real quick. And it's the same thing with this stuff. It can be a little uncomfortable, but when one really wants to learn it, that's how they'll do it. So again, I'll just say any specific grammar questions that anyone has, there are other people, uh, not in the chat room right now, but I have other students that are active on this channel commenting and things like that. With the uh, one individual's name is Colon Pascal. He's a very good student. He'll tell you that he learned this grammar just from studying this YouTube channel. He learned it like almost 85% closure just from studying this YouTube channel. He realized that all the answers that he, to the questions that he had were here. Well, maybe not all the answers, but most of them. Last flag standing. It's Russell's story. I'm actually very uh, grateful and respectful to Colin Russell hyphen J Colin Gould for the part he played in bringing the grammar to the public and everything he did pretty much that I'm aware of prior, prior to 2017. I love the videos prior to 2017 and just the way he carried himself and, and those types of things when he was with Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller, man, what a team. Very grateful for, for what they did and the mechanics that they brought forth. For the appreciation of these lessons is with the gratitude by this appreciation. Hoog. H-O-O-O-G. Man, these names. Well, let's read that backwards. For this appreciation of the gratitude. So you're appreciating the gratitude is with these lessons by the appreciation. So the appreciation is giving the lessons. I understand what you're saying, Hoob. I appreciate your viewership. Since you wrote it in the comments, it's open to me auditing it as a tutor. Appreciation is no contract uh, vow in front of a consonant. So perhaps one could say something like for this claim it's knowledge of the facts is with this claim of the gratitude with the lessons of the tutor comma Jason hyphen Matthew colon glass with this correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar conveyance by this claimant and by this commenter comma, space, hoog, period. There, I just did a correct sentence structure for you verbally on the spot. And as I say in other videos, this is definitely something that you have to know how to do if you're going to use this out in the now space. Well, it's not something you have to know how to do. It's just very useful to be able to do it, to come up with it on the spot like that. And that only comes, well, at least for me, it took me a thousand hours to learn this. I'm up around 13 to 14,000 hours for those counting hours. 
of performance and study. So I'm pretty confident with what it is that I do. And with regards to this, with the grammar. I'll take the Pepsi challenge with anyone anywhere with this stuff in the now space. I enjoy it. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Appreciate those grammar questions. Uh, contact me at my email address if you have any other grammar questions. If I can answer them, I will. If not, I'll schedule a consultation or if you want to apply for a correct grammar workshop. Peace.